Let's look at another linear word problem. In this question, we're told that a video rental company has two monthly plans that they offer. Plan A charges a flat fee of $30, whereas Plan B charges $9 plus $3 per video. Which plan is a better deal? Now, like most linear word problems that ask you which one is better or which one is more affordable, the answer is often it depends. And you're going to see why in a moment here. So let's talk about plan A on this side and we'll talk about plan B over here on this side. So plan A, the cost is $30 and it's $30 no matter what, right? So if you're trying to write this as a linear equation, you might think, okay, well, you know, y equals mx plus b, but instead of y and x, you know, what do we have? Well, we have cost, so maybe you say c instead of y, and then instead of x, maybe you put like v for the number of videos, and then plus b, right? Well, what, is, what does b represent? Well, b would be the starting cost, right? b would be your y-intercept. It's where the cost begins. So the cost when you rent zero videos, how much are you having to pay, right? So when v is zero, when you have zero videos, how much is b? Well, for this one, they're costing you $30, right, no matter what. So it's just a flat fee of 30. So really, you don't have a slope, right, because it doesn't matter how many videos you end up renting. Plan A charges you $30 no matter what. So you would just say C is equal to 30, right? This, there, this term wouldn't exist. You'd have a slope of zero. Whereas over here in plan B, your cost is going to equal $9 plus another three dollars for every video that you end up renting so if you rent one video it's three dollars plus nine so twelve if you rent two videos it's three times two which is six plus nine which is fifteen dollars and so the more videos you rent the more costly this plan becomes and so if you want to write this as a linear equation you could say c is equal to three v plus nine just to make it look more like y equals mx plus b right so v is your variable three is in essence your slope and then 9 is your b value that's what you start with right at the beginning if you rent zero videos you still end up paying nine dollars so nine is kind of your starting point so if we want to graph these two things you can make an xy plane really you could use v and c c for the cost v for the number of video rentals c equals 30 how do you graph that well that's just a horizontal line starting at 30. so you can see that the cost doesn't change no matter how many videos, whether the videos are 5, 10, whatever, the cost is exactly the same for plan A. So you can label this as plan A. Now what about plan B? Well, plan B starts off at a cost of $9, right? 9 is your y-intercept. And of course, if you don't rent any videos, it only costs you $9. But as you start renting videos, it's going to get more and more expensive. Like we talked about, right? The more videos you end up renting, you know, if you rent 10 videos, that's another 30 bucks you got to spend, 3 times 10, plus your 9, so that'll be 39 bucks. So you can see the price increases. So that's plan B. So the question, which one's more affordable or which one's a better deal? Well, like I said, it really depends because if you draw like an imaginary line here and you cut this graph in half, on the left-hand side, plan A is more expensive than plan B. But on the right-hand side here, you can see that plan B is higher. It's more expensive than plan A. So the question is, how many videos are you planning on renting, but also at what point does it become more expensive to use B than A, right? Because if you can find out where this line is located, what that V value is, that X value, that'll tell you, right? So if that ends up being like 10 and you know, oh, I'm going to rent more than 10, then you would go with plan A because A is less expensive after that amount. But if you think you're going to rent less, then you would go with plan B because plan B is less expensive before that amount. Really what we're trying to do is find the point of intersection, which you might hear referred to as POI, point of intersection. You're trying to find where the two lines cross each other. Okay, how do we do this? Well, we have a couple different methods. One method that I like to use is called substitution. Substitution. So that says that if we have c equals 30 as one equation and c equals 3v plus 9, to find the point where they're equal to each other, we just set these equal to each other. What do I mean by that? Well, at that point where they're equal, they have the same x and y values. They have the same v and c values. 
So that means that if this c is equal to this c, and c is equal to this, and c is also equal to this, then this should equal this, and I can set them equal. 30 equals 3v plus 9. I can do that, and when I solve for v, that'll tell me the location where they're equal to each other. It'll tell me the point of intersection. So let's solve for v. Bring the 9 over here. 30 minus 9 equals 3v. 30 minus 9 is equal to 21. Divide both sides by 3 to get v by itself. 7 equals v. So 7 is the amount of videos that you would have to rent in order for plan B to become more expensive, right? So up here on our graph, this value here is 7. So if you want to rent more than 7 videos, go with plan A, because B becomes more expensive. If you're going to rent less than 7 videos, then plan B is the better deal, because A is more expensive. See how it's higher up? So that's what we had to find, was that point of intersection. Now, if we want to use a different method, this other method is called elimination. Elimination. How does this work? Well, what you'll do is you'll write your first equation, y equals, or c in this case, c is equal to 30. And then you also write your equation c equals 9 plus 3v. And you can put a 0 here if you want, just as a placeholder, because there's no like v in this equation. So you can put plus 0v if you want to. Um, and the idea is we want to cancel some things out here. So what you could do is you could subtract. What's going to cancel when I subtract? Well, the c's will go away, right? So when you do this, you either want to get rid of the c's or get rid of the v's. So you have a c here and a c here. So it's easiest to get rid of the c's because they're both the same, right? They're both 1c. So to subtract, c minus c is 0. 30 minus 9 is 21. 0 minus 3v is minus 3v. So now what I have is 0 equals 21 minus 3v. Bring the 3v to the other side. Divide both sides by 3. v is equal to 7. You get the exact same answer you get using substitution. So that's kind of our first introduction to elimination and substitution. We will be doing a whole heck of a lot more examples of these in the coming videos.